Hello and welcome to our next module on linear block codes. Let us start with a brief outline of the talk. What we will start with is um, some error control codes. We will look at block codes. We have started looking at Hamming codes, Hamming distances and then we will look at some examples. But before we start, let us start with a quick recap of the things we have done already. We will revisit them today in terms of block codes, Hamming distances, Hamming weights and finally, we will look at some examples. So, this is our error control coding block diagram. What we have is a source encoder in the communication channel followed by a channel encoder and a modulator and then we send our waveforms over the channel where they are corrupted by noise. At the receiving end, we demodulate the channel decoder uh, recovers from the errors introduced by the channel and finally, the source decoder uh, gives back the original bit stream. Now, in this module, we are focusing on the channel encoder and channel decoder clearly they are in existence because of the presence of noise in the channel. The job of the noise is to flip a few bits here and there and our job of the channel decoder is to recover from these errors. We established last time that the basic idea behind channel coding is to add redundancy in a known manner. Okay? So, this known manner is critical. This known manner is a mathematical method. It could be an algebraic structure. It could be a geometric structure that we will put in so that we at the transmitter and our friend at the receiver knows how we have added the redundancy, but noise definitely does not know and it creates randomly, it breaks the structure, but we would use that structure, inbuilt mathematical structure to bring uh, recover from the erroneous bits. So, this is the general idea in layman's language. Mathematically, how we do it, we will see shortly. In order to do so, we have defined some terms, some mathematical tools. So, we talked about the Hamming distance between two code words as the number of places the code words differ and we denote it by d c 1 comma c 2. So, we have done this earlier. And as a simple example, if we have these two vectors 1 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 0 1 1, we can clearly count the number of places we are different. We will look at it again uh, shortly, but if you clearly go for these two vectors, first you say that they are of the same length and then you try to compare and you find out where they are different and you find them different at these three places marked by blue and hence we say that the Hamming distance is 3. Okay. So, this is how we calculate Hamming distance. It should be pointed out that it is not necessarily between binary bit streams that you can find the Hamming distance. These could have been vectors of any symbols or characters and you can find the Hamming distance. The only condition is that they uh, get elements from the same set and they should be of equal length. We also defined uh, what is a Hamming weight. Hamming weight of a code word or for that matter any vector is equal to the number of non-zero elements in the code word. We realize that Hamming weight has no units because it is just a number. So, Hamming weight is typically denoted by W parenthesis C, where C is the code word or the uh, vector in question. We can see that the distance, the Hamming distance between C1 and C2 is nothing but the weight of C1 minus C2. Okay? This is pretty easy to observe because C1 minus C2 tells me where they are different and uh, so if they are different, it puts a 1, if they are not different, it puts a 0 and therefore, weight is just the sum of the non-zero elements. We now talk about block codes and block code consists of a set of fixed length code words and that is the block length. So, the block length is typically denoted by n and all the code words 
uh, in this uh, block code are of equal length and this vectors of length n each one uh, has n components and a block code of size m defined over an alphabet q symbols is a set of m query sequences each of length n. So, you do not have to necessarily have a binary block code, you can have a, a ternary, a quaternary or a hexadecimal or anything that you like, but if you have q equal to 2 we call them uh, bits, so binary digits and it is a binary code that we have. But in general m is equal to q raised to the power k for some integer k and if the block length is n then such a code is called an n comma k code. Please recall code is a set of code words each having a length of n. Let us look at a quick, a quick example. So, what is the job of a encoding procedure? It takes uncoded bits and makes code words out of them. So, let us look at this very simple example where we have two input bits. So, k is equal to 2 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 and we can have uh, 4 corresponding code words uh, right here listed. So, m is equal to 4 this is the size, n is equal to 5 if you see each code word is 5 bit long and k clearly is 2 where 2 is the uncoded bits. So, it is a 2 comma uh, so n um, is 5 so 5 comma 2 uh, block code. But question is this has to be used in a practical situation. So, how do we transmit a sequence of bits uh, after encoding that is the question we will now address. But uh, before that let us define two other quantities the minimum distance and minimum weight. So, these are the characteristics of a code. The minimum distance of a code is a minimum Hamming distance between any two code words. So, there are lots of code words present because code is clearly a set of code words. We compare take two code words at a time for all possible combinations. So, if you see this definition d star is the minimum distance is minimum of all the distances between c i code word i and c j code word j where i is not equal to j. In the case when i is equal to j clearly the distance will be 0, uh, so distance with self is 0, we do not consider those cases, we only consider uh, different code words and find out all the possible differences and choose the minimum of that difference. So, what is this minimum distance? Intuitively it tells us how different are two vectors. If they are similar the distance will be less, if they are very different the distance will be more. So, it is kind of a similarity measure. It is such an important parameter that an n comma k code with a minimum distance d star is sometimes denoted as n comma k comma d star that is how we display it. Now, what we next define is the minimum weight of a code is the smallest weight of a non-zero code word and is denoted by w star. So, again this is a property of a code which is a set of code words. I calculate the weight of each vector, each code word in my set and whatever is the smallest barring the all 0 code word I calculate the weight of each code word and this the smallest of them is w star. We also briefly looked at what is a linear block code LBC. So, a linear code has the following properties, the sum of two code words belonging to the code is also a code word belonging to the code. So, this is very interesting, take any two code words, add them up and you get another valid code word. This is interesting and this is the first constraint we are putting in. Again, this is kind of adding some kind of an algebraic structure, we have put a constraint. How will this help us? Well, this makes that only a sp certain special set of code words are the valid code words. We know it, the receiver knows it, but the noise does not know this. So, we will use this property to check whether some code words have undergone flipping of bits are erroneous or not. 
The second constraint for a linear code is that the all zero code word must always be a valid code word. It must be contained in that set in that code. And finally, it can be shown for a linear block code that the minimum weight is also equal to the minimum distance of the code that is d star is equal to w star. So, if I can verify these three properties, then I can declare that a certain code is indeed a linear block code. But please note that the presence of an all zero code word is a necessary but not sufficient condition. Now, here in this slide, the most important thing that comes out is this word called sum. If we are saying that sum of two code words is a valid code word, then we must define the sum because sum is an operation, okay? but we better have a table which tells us how two elements add up because there must be a rule that we need to follow. A later part of this lecture, we will focus on how to add two code words. Okay? This is not a, a trivial job, we will talk about it. But let us look at a simple example of a linear block code. Uh, these are the four code words, block length is clearly four. Why is that? Look, each one has four bits, so it is um, n is equal to 4. But in order to verify whether it is uh, an indeed a linear code as well, it is clearly a block code because the block length is 4. But if it is a linear block code, it must have the following two constraints satisfied. One is the all zero code word must be present, which is true. And sum of any two code words is also valid code word. So, we try out this there are only a finite ways of choosing two out of this four. So, we once we get that, we can try and add all the possible combinations and if we do this exercise, we indeed find that any two code words, if you add the resulting vector is again one of the four valid code words. Thus, we can declare that this C is indeed a linear block code. Okay. Now, what we can do is talk about the minimum distance of this code and we will shortly show that this is minimum distance is 2. How do we do that? We take two code words and find the distance, Hamming distance. And once we do for all possible combinations, here it is 4 choose 2 is equal to 6 is the total number of pairs we can form from 4 valid code words. We find that the distances are 2, 2, 4, 4, 2, 2. Clearly, the minimum distance is 2. But we have also shown that d star is equal to w star. So, barring the all zero code word, we find out the minimum weight. There are only 3 possible non-zero code words, weight for this is 2 because there are 2 non-zero elements, weight for this is 2, 2 non-zero elements, weight is 4. So, the minimum weight is 2 which is equal to the minimum distance. So, this linear block code satisfies all the properties. Now, we move ahead and we try to answer the basic question, how do we add? And for that, we need a brief introduction to something called as Galois fields. So, let us quickly define what is a field. A field F is a set of elements with two operations, addition and multiplication satisfying the following properties. So, what are we looking at? We are looking at a set of elements okay, and two operations defined over them. First is that F is closed under addition and multiplication that is a plus b and a into b are in f if a and b are in f. Suppose a and b are two elements, then their addition also is contained in f and that their product is also contained in f. This property number 1. Then the certain basic laws must hold like commutative a plus b is equal to b plus a. Similarly, a into b is b into a. 
see these are so basic we take them for granted but since we are defining the properties of a galva field it is worthwhile looking at all of this then the associative law a plus b parenthesis plus c is equal to a plus b plus c similarly a into parenthesis open b into c is equal to parenthesis a into b into c and distributive a into b plus c is nothing but a into b plus a into c so this is like our second nature we we use them all the time but they must be valid under this definition what else there are few more properties let's go we say that identity elements 0 and 1 must exist in f satisfying the two properties so what are we saying other than all the elements in the set two elements must necessarily exist with some special properties these two elements are 0 and 1 and what are the two properties that we want them to satisfy any element a in the set plus 0 is a and any element a in the set into 1 is a okay. again they appear to be trivial but they will hold value very shortly another thing is that for any element a in f there exists an additive inverse minus a such that a plus minus a is 0 that is minus a is also an element if a plus b is equal to 0 then b is called the additive inverse of a this must exist so each and every element must have an additive inverse similarly for any element a in f there must exist a, a multiplicative inverse of course except for 0 so if a into b is 1 because clearly 1 is within the set 0 and 1 are defined so if a into b is 1 then b is the multiplicative inverse of a please note this set of properties that we have covered so far are true for fields with both finite as well as infinite elements so we are not saying that it must necessarily have a finite number of elements what is interesting is that galva fields uh, may not exist for all any arbitrary number of elements for example galva field for 2 3 4 5 exist but galva field for 6 does not exist we will show later that if the number is a prime or a prime power then the galva field exists so a field with a finite number of elements say q is called a galva field it is pronounced galva based on this guy uh, who was uh, French um, and it is denoted by GFQ and please note if only the first seven of the eight properties we have discussed that is the constraint of multiplicative inverse is thrown out of the window then then it is uh, no longer a field but it is only called a ring so we have defined together what is a Galva field and what is a ring sometimes the Galva field is simply called a field but please note that this guy Galva in a very short duration of time has made indelible contribution to mathematics okay? and we will be using Galva fields over and over again for our course in coding theory so let's look at a simple example uh, let's look at Galva field GF4 with four elements now what are these elements we have 0 and 1 they must be present and this is 2 and 3 well I could have labeled them a and b it does not matter for sake of convenience only we are saying 0 1 2 and 3 are the four elements now this is a set so there is no, nothing like this is holier than thou 2 is not bigger than 1 this this greater than or less than operation is not defined only two operations make sense the addition and multiplication so if we were to define this I need to give you the addition table the rules for addition and rules for multiplication why did we start on all of this remember we wanted to look at linear block codes where some of two code words is a valid code words now code words are made out of elements taken from this set 
So, some the addition must be defined. So, let us look at the addition and multiplication tables for GF4. Now, in order to define the addition and multiplication table, we write out the elements 0, 1, 2, 3 on the horizontal and the vertical axis. So, it is a matrix, it is a kind of a table, more importantly a lookup table where I need to know what happens when 0 adds with 0, the entry will be here, 0 adds with 1, 2 adds with 3, 3 adds with 2 and so on and so forth. Now, we only need to fill one half of the element because this table must be symmetric. We have established that A plus B is the same as B plus A, A into B is B into A and therefore, we can start filling in the elements of this addition table first. So, if we were to fill out the numbers, we can write them as follows. So, it tells you how to add. For example, if I want to know what is 2 plus 1, well it is 3. What is 3 plus 1? It is 2. What is 1 plus 1? It is 0. In fact, this diagonal is all zeros, so self addition is 0. Okay. So, for example, what is the rule for adding 3 with 3? I get 0. Who tells me that? Well, this table is skillfully constructed that it follows all the properties of the Galva field that we discussed in the previous slide. It is not easy just if I can interchange any two numbers, it will cease to be a field because this property addition property will violate some or the other rule. Let us look at the second operation, the multiplication operation leading to this following multiplicative table. Here, please note that product with zeros is 0. So, first column and first row is all zeros and then multiplication with 1 is the self. So, 1, 2, 3 and 1, 2, 3. So, essentially this these four elements have really been thought and filled out. If you go to the addition table again, you can look at an additive inverse. Additive inverse means if a plus b is 1, a plus b is 0, then a is additive inverse of b. So, if we have a 0 in each one of the rows and columns, so all the elements do have an additive inverse. Similarly, a multiplicative inverse other than the 0 element must exist. right? So, 3 is the multiplicative inverse of 2 because 3 into 2 is 1. 2 is the multiplicative inverse of 3, 1 is the multiplicative inverse of 1. So, a multiplicative inverse also exists for all elements other than 0. Now, please note it is not trivial to construct it. For example, you just cannot say that GF 4 is just a modulo 4 arithmetic because if it were so, then 3 plus 2 right? is 1, but 3 plus 3 you would not get a 0. So, this is not simply a modulo for arithmetic. Now, let us quickly define something called as a linear span which we might use later. So, let S be a set of vectors of length n whose components are defined over GFQ. So, the terminology that we use is defined over GFQ. Galva field with q elements. Okay. The set of all linear combinations of the vectors of S is called the linear span of S and is denoted by this angular bracket S. The linear span is thus a subspace of G f q n generated by S and given any subset S of G f q n, it is possible to obtain a linear code C as a span generated by S consisting of precisely the following code words. The all zero words, all words in S, all linear combinations of two mo or more words in S. So, let us look at this definition of generating code words uh, with a, a simple example. So, let S be the following three vectors. 
So, we write out all the possible linear combinations of S. So, I add them up. So, 1 1 0 and 0 1 0 I get this. I can add this with this I get this or I can add this with this and I get this. So, all these combinations are there and then we can all add all three of them and I get this. So, I get this four possible outcome. So, the code is defined as all the inherent elements C as follows and this is kind of a trivial code with minimum distance equal to 1. Now, let us look at uh, a code which is defined over GF3. So, Galois field with three elements. Let S is equal to 1, 2 and 2, 1 and these are the addition tables for uh, the element 0, 1 and 2. Now, it can be noted that this time the modulo 3 arithmetic holds. So, in general we will see that if 3 is a if g f q q is a prime number in this case q is equal to 3 then modulo arithmetic works. But Galois fields are defined for prime numbers and prime powers. G f 4 was 2 raised to the power 2. So, it was a prime power and hence we did not find a modulo arithmetic to hold. But here it is a prime number and so modular arithmetic does hold. So, again we find all possible linear combination and therefore, C is defined as 0 0 1 2 and 2 1 are the possible code words for this case. It is just one way, but this is clearly not a very methodical way to move forward. So, we now ask ourselves the most basic question, is there a smart way to generate a linear block code? All right. So, what is the motivation for this? Well, the generator matrix converts that is encodes a vector of length k to a vector of length n. Let us look at an example here. Suppose, I have my linear block code. So, this is an encoder and the job of the encoder is to k, take k bits and convert them into a longer n bits. Now, one way is to do a lookup table. Question is, is it still efficient for large k? So, what is a lookup table? Well, you have uncoded and you have encoded. Suppose, I have got a certain value of k. So, here I will start with 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 up to 1, 1, 1. So, this is 2 raise per k. For each one of them, I will have a valid code word. So, it could be 0, 0, 0, this one will have 1, 0, 1, 0, 0 something and so and so forth. Now, the problem is this k. If this k equal to say 235, then we are looking at 2 raise to the power 235. Now, this is a huge table. It will take a lot of memory. I do not know whether my smartphone has the ability to carry this larger memory. So, this lookup table is nice for small values of k, but the moment k becomes large, we are in trouble. We cannot store this big thing, this big lookup table. 
And even if you could, searching it would be even more difficult. So, storage and search both are highly inf inefficient for large values of k. Because if you, if you try to look at it, how big is 2 raise to the power 235, uh, you would have to do 2 raise to the power 10 and then um, 23 roughly, this is equal to 10 raise to the power 3 going to 23 and then this will go to 10 raise to the power close to 70 or something. This is a huge number. I mean, uh, this is not really practical to put them in the memory. So, we must design a smarter way to do things. So, we go back to our slide and see what can we do. So, let us say that the input vector, the uncoded symbols are represented by the information vector i and the coded symbols are given by c. Would not it be great to have c equal to i into a magical matrix G, which we will call a generator matrix. So, i is my vector of length k, G should necessarily be a matrix k cross n such that C becomes 1 cross n, where C is the code word and i is the information word. So, the generator matrix takes in the information word and converts it into a code word. In other words, it takes a vector of length k and converts it to a vector of length n. But care must be taken that it indeed generates a linear block code. That is, the all zero code word must be a valid code word and all code words, any two code words added together should be another valid code word. Question is, can it deliver? Can it give you such a thing? So, let us look at the c equal to i into g. The generator matrix provides a concise and efficient way to represent a linear block code. Okay? In fact, it is the only practical way for any large sized k. We do not have a choice. The n cross k matrix can generate q raise to k code words. So, in the previous example, we only talked about binary, but please remember that my vectors could as well be non-binary. Thus, instead of having a large lookup table, large impractical lookup table of q raise to k code words, one can simply have a generator matrix. So, just let us look at this a little bit more carefully, what have we done so far? We have here c equal to i times g. Now, my c is 1 cross n, this i is 1 cross k and this g is k cross n. So, this 1 cross k multiplied with a, a matrix of k cross n gives me 1 cross n. Let us see what is the problem or advantage with this kind of representation. I do not have to worry about this k being large here because input is coming in, it is none of my worries. The question is what do we do with the generator matrix? How big is this? Well, whatever be is the size of k, k into n, n is greater than k and so my generator matrix is nothing but of k into n. This size is highly manageable because even if k is 235 and n is 255, suppose we are talking about this is my n comma k code. This is a practical number. So, if k is still my 235, the size of this G matrix is nothing but 235 into 255. Definitely, I can store these number of bits. It is trivial. So, suddenly a very large problem of storing 
2 raise to the power 235 into n that is 255 bit long table lookup table has reduced to merely storing just a few thousand bits. So, now we have converted a very impractical problem to a practical problem that touches every day of our lives. We come back to our slides and we now show that instead of having a large lookup table of q raise per k code words, one can simply have a generator matrix. Let us look at this example. Consider this G matrix, where I, G is equal to a 2 cross 3 and I would like to have my first code word out. So, first code word takes my i vector and multiplies it with g to yield a 3 bit long vector. So, no surprise 0 0 gets converted into 0 0 0. Now, similarly we can take that next information vector information word is 0 1 again multiplied with g matrix I get another 3 bit. Similarly, I can have the third vector C 3 as the code word number 3 multiplying with 1 0 and finally, we can have the fourth one k is equal to 2. So, there are only 4 possible input vectors the information word 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 and corresponding to those we have got 4 possible code words right block length is 3. So, this is a 3 comma 2 code and the size of this generator matrix is simply uh, 2 cross 3. So, the code that is generated by this generator matrix is 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 1 1 1 1. What are these? These are the 4 encircled code words here written out there. Note that that this is a 3 comma 2 code from the fact that the dimension of the generator matrix is indeed 3 cross 2. So, this is a simple example which tells us that yes the generator matrix can give you a valid code. So, we now come to the basic um, summary of today's lecture. We have had a very quick uh, recap about linear block codes. Then we moved on to a very interesting concept of the generator matrix, why generator matrix is an efficient way to represent linear block codes. And then we looked at some examples which tell you um, whether the codes are indeed linear, are they satisfying the properties of linear block codes and how you can use a simple generator matrix to generate uh, a code. With that, we come to the end of today's lecture.